Hello everyone and welcome to Missouri Grown Carolina Home. I'm Katie if you're new here and if you are new here I'm very glad to have you join me for this video. I am taking part in the open collab hosted by Kat, Shauna, Taylor, Jess, and Tamara and I will have their links all listed down below as well. So thank you ladies for having this collab. It's very fun and I'm very excited. I am making a loaded baked potato soup. It is a copycat recipe from a restaurant that I don't know if is still in Texas. My husband went to a long, long time ago. It was called Saltgrass Steakhouse, and I will have the link to the recipe that I use down below as well, but it's very, very, very delicious, and I'm so glad that he introduced that to me when we first got married. I made it up for us, and he said that it was spot on, so we've been making it ever since, and it's so good. So I have that, some cheater <laughs> breadsticks that are very quick, simple, and delicious. And my husband is helping me make his famous, well, we call it famous because they're delicious, peanut butter rice crispy treats. They're very, very easy to make and very delicious. So anyway, that is what I'm bringing to this video, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so I went ahead and fried up the bacon. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out of there. And this is so it doesn't get soggy in the soup. Back in last or if people want to top it with it too. Got what I could out. The rest will be fine in there. Now we're just going to add our vegetables. In there and let those saute up. And in just a few minutes, we'll add the garlic, salt, and pepper. The re original recipe calls for white pepper as well. And I do normally add that in, but I did not have it on hand this time. So I just went ahead and I'm just not going to put it in. But it's only a little bit of, of it too. It's only about a quarter of a teaspoon I think you add to it. But if that is something you have on hand, go ahead and add that in. But I'm just going to do salt, pepper, and garlic, and it will still turn out delicious. So we'll go ahead and let those start to get softened. You can tell there's a lot of grease in there, but I think the potatoes will soak a lot of that up too when they're cooking. I'll go ahead and add my seasoning. So this is just garlic, salt, and pepper. Stir 
both of them. And I know you don't want to add the garlic in too early, otherwise it'll burn. Just gonna let that soften up and then we will add the potatoes. All right, so these have softened up quite a bit. They're not completely soft, but that's okay because the potatoes are gonna take quite a while. So now I'm just gonna add in my potatoes. I have about five cups here. The recipe calls for two large baking potatoes. But in my opinion, potato soup needs to be thick with potatoes. I'm just going to try and dump that in without getting burnt. But anyway, we like a lot of potatoes in our potato soup. So I went ahead and added five cups. And this is going to take quite a while for them to soften. You want them to soften completely. So we're just going to stir them. And let them saute up for a little while. And um, I'll probably let them try and soak up some of that grease, to be honest. Get rid of some of that. Let them saute up. And then a lot of times, if they aren't getting soft enough, I just put in part of my chicken broth and put my lid on it and steam them. And that works every time for me. But to start off, we're just going to just let them kind of simmer in the pot for a little bit so let's see I'm gonna let them cook for a little bit when we come back I will show you what's next so for my side dish I always serve it with um, um, breadsticks sorry <laughs> and this time I thought I would try kind of a keto way semi homemade huh so I use these Rhodes dinner rolls these are the best rolls. They're the frozen kind. You just thaw, rise, and bake, like it says. And they're so good. But anyway, I'm going to use these this time. And what I did, just set them out to rise just a little bit. They so now I'm going to roll them into um, breadstick shapes and then let them rise a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and get those started. I know this is the easy way out, and I actually have a, a breadstick recipe that I've, I've used in the past. I have a bread machine that I really like, actually, but I just, I haven't made them that way in so long because I've been using these. One day I need to pull that thing back out and try it again, but a lot of times when I do make homemade bread, it becomes really dense, but these do not. These are fluffy and delicious. So, they're weird breadstick shapes, but they will work. Get them on here. Kind of spread them out so they can rise. And what I'm going to do, let's see, it's about, it's about an hour till dinner. So, what I'm going to do is just let them rise. Come back right about eight minutes before dinner. Put them with melted butter and garlic salt and throw them in the oven. That's it. But I'll show you that when, um, when we get ready for that. But let's let them rise for a little while longer. Okay, so I actually did not have to add any of that chicken broth to get these to soften. Um, but what I am going to do is add some chicken broth and deglaze my pan.
bottom of my pot is awfully, you know, I would say burnt, I don't know, <laughs> but let's see if we can get some of that up. All that flavor is cooked in on the bottom there. And pretty burnt. I'm not going to lie. I've definitely scorched the bottom of my pan. But we'll get up what we can. You can feel it loosening up a little. And if you don't burn yours to the bottom, you can just add two cups of chicken broth at this point and one and a half cups of the heavy whipping cream and bring it to a boil. Which looks like what I'm going to just have to do. Because i got to think what I can. Okay, let's just add our chicken broth. Two cups of that. And our cream. We're going to bring that to a boil. Okay, so this has come up to a boil. And at this point you can take half of the potatoes and either put them in a blender or use an immersion blender. I'm just going to mash some up with my potato masher. Like I said, we want some mashed, but we do like to make sure we have, you know, know the potatoes are there. So I won't mash all of them for sure. This also helps the, uh, the soup to thicken, but the cheese will thicken it as well. Okay. So I think that's good. I think I can already tell it thickened it already in a little bit. Okay. Add in our cheese. Recipe calls for two cups. But we might add a little more. We'll just see. So I'm gonna stir in what I just added and then add a little more. And just want to stir it till it's melted. It melts pretty quick. I'm just going to add just a tiny bit more and then that will call that good. You can always top it with your cheese too. Um, at this point, if you are ready to serve, then go ahead and add your bacon back in. I will do that just before we are ready to eat, but I am also going to get ready and finish my six. 
so we are just gonna actually I'm actually gonna turn the heat off because we don't need it on anymore let's see how thick that got this stuff is delicious I'm not gonna put a lid on it because we will be eating soon but I am I lost a pot holder in the process of this <laughs> here we go I am gonna take it off the heat so that's it that's our potato soup recipe let's finish up those breadsticks now okay so you can see that these rows risen they're they puffed up quite a bit so we're just gonna spread some melted butter on them I always melt way too much butter. I, I overestimate what I need. And I'm going to use some garlic salt. We're just basically making a very quick version of Olive Garden breadsticks. So these are going to go in the oven at 350 for 8 minutes. And then we will show you what it all looks like come together. All right, y'all, here it is. The moment we've been waiting for, dinner time. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy this recipe. All right, so let's make dessert. We are going to start out with a cup of peanut butter and add it to a, a big pot. You will also need a cup of sugar and a cup of caro or light corn syrup. And you're just gonna add those three things to the pot. You are gonna heat it just for a quick minute. And that's really all you're gonna do. And then you will add your six cups of Rice Krispies. So let's watch my husband do his magic. I am just gonna come in here real quick and say, we had just under a cup of corn syrup. Like probably, we were probably less than a quarter cup shy of a cup. And it did make these just a little bit crumbly in the end. So when you do make these, or if you do, or if you had have made these, make sure you have a cup of corn syrup. We got every last drop that we could out of it. And they were still really, really good, like usual. They were just a little bit more crumbly. So I just wanted to come in here and say that real fast. But he just added those three cups of things. And then he's just going to heat it, stir it all together and really just heat it enough to get it incorporated. That's it. So Mommy. make sure you don't keep that heat on for too long. And then you're going to add.
here is basically when he told me he didn't think he had enough corn syrup because normally they come together a little bit better than this. You can see how they're crumbly, but he ended up making it work by pressing it into the pan, but you could tell he was having just a little bit of a hard time getting it completely incorporated and that was just because we were just shy a little bit of corn syrup. So like I said, just make sure you have all <laughs> of the complete ingredients when you make these and they will turn out perfect. Now he's just going to spray a 9 by 13 pan and press these Rice Krispies in the best that he can. He does a really good job pressing it and pushing it all together. So anyway, just like regular Rice Krispie treats, you just push them in there. So we're gonna let those set up for just a few minutes and he is going to melt the chocolate chips. We are using semi-sweet chocolate chips and we're gonna use a whole bag. We're just gonna turn that heat on low and melt them up. You could use milk chocolate or whatever kind of chocolate you like. We've actually done milk chocolate before and we both found that to be just a little bit too sweet with the peanut butter and syrup and all the sugar. Definitely not the healthiest recipe, but they are delicious, and they are always a crowd pleaser when he makes them. Like, seriously, people rave about them. So, anyways, we are doing semi-sweet chocolate chips, but you feel free to do whatever you like. Whatever kind of chocolate you like. Just make sure you melt it up real good, and then we're going to spread it on top. You definitely want to melt your chocolate low and slow if you do it in a pan. Um, you could do it in a double broiler, whatever you feel is best. We were both kind of holding our breath here because we have had our chocolate seize on us before. And once it seizes, there is no going back. So we were just doing it on low, low.
You just want to smooth it on as evenly as possible and then we're going to let them set up. They usually take several hours to set up when you use chocolate chips so just make these early in the day so you can enjoy them after dinner and they will be delicious. So anyway he's just going to smooth all of this until So that is it, my friends. Quick, easy, and delicious. Like I said, always a crowd pleaser. We are just gonna set these aside for a couple of hours, let them set up, let that chocolate get hardened up, and then we will cut into it and enjoy. I hope you enjoy as well, friends. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have this, have tried this recipe or have one similar, let me know down below. We love potato soup and this is something that just warms you up on a cold fall day and it's delicious and hearty and we love it. And those breadsticks, as easy as they are, they are so good. Like, Pretty sure the next day after my husband was still talking about them and said please make those again soon so they were very 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 good anyway I hope you enjoyed um, don't forget to like this video check out the links down below uh, for our hosts channels as well as the playlist down below for some delicious fall recipes thanks again friends until next time bye <laughs>